Nothing to it but to do it. Hey everybody, how are you? Um, might need to tweak the camera just a little bit. Hang on, let me just move it up just a smidge. There we go. All right. That looks better. Looks better here. So you're there. Computer's down here today. Kind of a different shot. But how are you guys? Um, are you getting any wind noise? Um, can you hear um, the air conditioning going? It's not super hot. 73 degrees in here. 50% humidity. Um, had the humidifier going. Rasmus is here. Hey, buddy. How are you, man? It's been a minute since I've seen you. Um, let's see. South Jersey's here. South Jersey. Um, St. Louis is here. San Louis is here. Harrisburg, PA. Just up that way. Um, just, uh, old and away. Hey, from Ottawa, from Ottawa. Uh, Patty Paste Dub. Hey, buddy. How are you? I'm glad you're here. Minnesota. Um, Stan Step from Minnesota. Kirkland Lake. Kirkland. Um, uh, Daniel from Philly. Caleb. Hey, I like your guitar, right? Caleb, you're amazing. So Caleb built this. If you saw on Instagram, I can't. It's back there. Can't quite see it, but I'll do some more stuff. If you've seen it on Instagram, um, I got Caleb. Caleb, do you like the amp? How the, we ended up trading an amp um, for a guitar rack that he built. So he got my Fishman Artist 30 um, in exchange for that. Hello from Sweden. Hey, buddy. Johan. Sup, bro. Uh, Lone Wolf Gray. Um, Southern Arizona. Delaware. Man, this is amazing. This is all over North Alabama, like Green Hills area. Um, Muscle Shoals. Staley's here from Tacoma. And yeah. Hey, new guy here. John Hicks, new guy. John from your... John from my what? John from Arkansas. John from Arkansas. Caleb, the amp is that big, very clean sound. Dude, it's, it's a great amp. And uh, I'm super excited that you got it. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, and Sonia from Northern New Jersey. Well, hello everybody. I'm glad you're here. Today's going to be a fun video. I, I had to, I have more to talk about and more to share with you than I can cover in an hour. And so that's exciting. And it's all just exciting stuff and it's cool stuff. And I want to talk about like, Hey, if you're trying to buy guitars, if you can only buy one guitar, what would you get? If you'd only get one acoustic guitar, one electric guitar, which two would I recommend? If you could only pair a couple of guitars together, what would what would I recommend? How do I think about which guitars to buy? Now, you're going to hear me talk about a bunch of roles, um, a bunch of uh, rules, or like general bits of advice, and I realize they don't take... You'll see. We'll get there. But I feel not like a hypocrite, but I do... You'll see. So, anyway, hey, Bob Brown from uh, your neighbor in Glen Allen, Virginia. Hey, my uh, my parents used to live in Glen Allen way long ago. Um, all right, hang on one sec. I'm just going to close a bunch of stuff that is not important to us. All right, I need to see console. That's good. But Acrobat, I don't need you. Lightroom, don't need you. Um, Premiere, don't need you. Um, Chrome. All right, I think that's everything. Hey, uh, one electric guitar. Look at you jumping the gun, Philip. I appreciate it. Uh, one electric guitar, an ES335, one acoustic guitar, an OM of something. Dude, uh, that's funny, man. I, I, You'll see what I come to, and it is basically the opposite of both of those guitars. Um, so, all right, well, let's, uh, let's buckle in now. Um, here we go. So, first and foremost, this video is brought to you by my course... I always do that. I have to, this is dumb. I should just move it to that side, right? I should move it over here and then it wouldn't be in the way. But this course is brought, this whole uh, show today, the live show is brought to you by my course, Write Guitars Faster. Write Guitars Faster is, it's information that I've learned from, why is it so hard to point? Um, this is information I have learned from 20 years of buying and selling guitars. 20 years of just committing my life to buying and selling, being around cool guitars, and how I've wound up with just, I mean, I have a crazy collection. Like, let me turn this off. Like, look at, I mean, just 
I have a vintage guild. I have a boxwood made by a friend. I have a pageant model one. I have my water lube is back there. And then a Hassan Dalton TDM. I've got a Rich Allen Telecaster back here. I've got an American Pro and a Rude Revelator and a Pink Paisley. I'll So in this course, I teach you how to get a collection of guitars that are actually show what you value, what you care about, what you want to uh, commit your legacy to. So anyway, it's very cool. And then also uh, in this course, you're, or in this video today, you're going to see some stuff uh, from Sweetwater. So Sweetwater is, they're not a sponsor of the show itself, but they do support me. And uh, so this is, I do have a, a link in the description down below. There are a bunch of affiliate links and Sweetwater is a great partner for my channel. So anyway, with all of that said, uh, let me check the comments one last time. Uh, acoustic one, dang. Um, yeah, Patrick, dude, he's got, dude, Philip knows what he's doing and he's really good at this stuff too. Um, so, anyway, that's a screenshot. Yeah, it's just me being an idiot. Just, hi, hello, how are you? Um, uh, but, uh, Hugh, coming from the UK. Do you ever call it the Hugh K? I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. What would be a good acoustic guitar? Okay, we'll talk about that later. Um, so, uh, yeah. Owning one guitar is like trying to eat one potato chip. No what? No can do. That's true. All right. So, Caleb. Caleb, thank you, man. Um, hey, you can kind of see the guitar rack back here. It's beautiful flame maple that Caleb made. Caleb, um, I know you've sent me. So, there's... I'll put the link... Um, to Caleb's stuff. If you want really great, well-made furniture with really great materials, he's awesome. So, anyway. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's get in here. So, yeah, Patty's super excited about this topic. I, thank you for doing this. Man, you are welcome. This was super fun. I got to kind of think about this all week, and then today I realized, like, once I accumulated my thoughts, I have a lot of thoughts about this, and I'm really excited. So, um, for me, and Okay, so let us dig in. So if you can only own one acoustic guitar, let's talk about why would you do this if you, I mean, there are times in your life where you just need to really pare down or if you're a beginner. Most research says that 16 to 18 million people in the U.S. started playing guitar in the last two years. And there are some of you here that are brand new to guitar and you're trying to figure out. One of the things I do every week, and I did a bunch of them. I think I did the most this week I've ever done. I think I did seven or eight uh, calls this week. I coach people through the process. I just give advice through video calls about figuring out which guitars are right for you, if you need to sell a guitar, if you want to buy a guitar. And so that's where a lot of these topics kind of come from on the live show is that I just get asked over and over and over certain questions. And so anyway, number one, if you want time with me, feel free to book it. It's on the website. So jeremytheguitarhunter.com slash shop. Uh, nope, not shop slash contact. And on the contact page or on the front page of the website, there's a time where you can see my schedule. You can see your schedule and see what lines up. And then you can pick a time. And uh, now I will say this is warning. Those prices are going to go up right now. It's like 15 bucks. 25 bucks and 50 bucks, something like that. And so those prices are going to go up just as demand has come up and it's just become in order for it to be anyway, for a bunch of reasons. But, um, yeah, I coach people through the process of finding the right guitars. And so what you're going to hear is a lot of the stuff that we'll talk about today is just stuff that I end up covering over and over and over in those calls. And it's super fun. So, um, misconceptions about guitars. And here's the thing. You, this is where I'd mentioned earlier. I break most of these rules, if not all of these rules at some point, and it's okay, but they are kind of undergirding, kind of underpinning, uh, convictions or just things that are helpful when you're trying to figure out which guitars would be right for you. So, um, as we distill and we start to prioritize what we should care about guitars, number one, you don't have to spend a bunch of money. Um, there's a guitar. Let's see. Did I put it away? Um, this is probably the most affordable guitar that I've had in the studio. And I know I've shown this on like every live show for the last little while, but this guitar is made of, it's all bamboo and it is unbelievably good sounding and it's so affordable. This is $399. This is from Natasha Guitars. There will be a review on this at some point when I kind of catch my breath and catch up again. But um, 
yeah, guitars do not have to be expensive to be great. This guitar sounds incredible. And like I said, it's 400 bucks. So uh, that's one of the biggest things is I think we're really stuck on the idea of like more money must mean it's more better. And if I spend more money, it must be better and I must be better and I must matter more. And so really kind of check that thing in yourself, that impulse that I must spend money. And if I spend money, then it matters. And then I count. And so, yeah. So you don't have to spend a bunch of money to get a great guitar. Number two, brands matter a lot less than you think they do. They really, really do. And especially as you start to kind of look at where we are at 2022, we're at a place in which there are thousands of good options for guitars. And that's if you include all the boutique builders. Even if you went to just factory-made guitars, you're now at like there are probably 40 or 50 good options in the affordable and middle price range. Um, there's this phrase and I read, I put the red like thing on it, whatever that's called the circle with the swoop de swoop. And, uh, and it says, cause okay. So Gibson's tagline for a few years was only a Gibson is good enough, which is a cool line. I like that, but I mean, it kind of, it is problematic because it kind of says first and foremost, like only Gibson's good enough and Gibson's are freaking expensive. And so it breaks rule number one, which is you're gonna spend a bunch of money and number two, because it has a brand on it and that does, you know, effectively will mean it's pouring rain. I just heard the rain coming through. But anyway, so uh, brands matter a lot less than you think. There are so many great options these days um, at all price points. It really is shocking. Um, now you don't, you probably don't need a boutique guitar. I think I took the probably out of here. I said, you don't need a boutique guitar. And I was going, I changed it to probably, probably. And then I took the probably back out. So you don't need a boutique guitar more than likely, probably because, uh, boutique guitars kind of break those first two rules. They're real expensive. And then usually like for the brand, you're kind of seeing like, well, that's why it's so expensive. It's a, you know, a Paget or it's a Waterloo or it's a Hassan Dalton. You can see where this is going. I break this rule because I own all three of those guitars, but you don't need a boutique guitar. Um, because most of it, like if you only had one guitar, you probably need a guitar. And we'll talk about this more in a second. That is like reliable, repeatable, easy to replace if something would go wrong with it or something break on it, that kind of thing. Number four, you don't need a ton of guitars. Like you could probably get away with two or three guitars. And if you have the right two or three, you could cover all the sonic ground. You need to, that's an interesting sonic ground. Um, you need to call, cover all of the territory, you know, in the three piece jazz band you're playing in or that blues thing that you do or the bluegrass thing, or you occasionally play at church or your cousin's wedding. Like you could probably with the right two or three guitars, a D 18, a Telecaster and a mandolin, or like you could probably get away with, you know, just, uh, with a couple a smaller amount of guitars than you think you would need. And uh, listen, I'm d let's count. Let me see if I can count how many guitars are in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Those are the guitars you can't see. So 21 guitars over there that you can't see. And then 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I hope my wife is not watching this. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. There are 36 freaking guitars in this room. I hadn't actually counted. Okay, who am I? Who am I to say you only need a couple guitars? This isn't even all of them. There are more guitars in the house. My Ferk still in the house. My Close composite guitar, my scarred guitar, my Tom DeLonge Strat. Yeah, there's probably 40. If I, if I really looked in every corner and under every bed, oh my gosh. Yeah, you don't need a ton of guitars, um, for sure. And so it's just in the last few years, okay, so yeah, it's just in the last few years that I've really been trying to figure out how do I get the right right guitars? How do I, how do I get like that collection of like five or six guitars that really, really, really 
work for me and really do all the stuff I need to do. And I can come home from work and just play it and be really satisfied. Or I can play, you know, like music for my kids, whatever. Number five, the best sounding or the best guitar for you is the one you already have. Stop buying guitars. You don't need another guitar. More than likely, the chances are like you have a guitar that is perfectly suited for you to learn new music, to write new music, to record stuff, to play in tune, to play out, to just have the experience of being a musical and creative person. So you probably don't need another guitar. So, you know, that's the biggest thing is like most of the time when people do these video calls and they say they need to talk to me and they want to ask me about, you know, should I buy a D18 with the, with the vintage tone system or should I buy a Torrified Boucher that's, you know, I'm like, well, you already have six guitars. Like, you probably don't need this guitar. Like, maybe take two weeks, don't think about it. Um, like, unbookmark the page. So, that's probably, those are some of my guiding principles. Now, with this, how many guitars did I have? 36? 36 in this room, I think. Um, gas is real more than time travel yeah guitar buying anonymous yeah that's what okay um, now keep in mind and this is going to feel braggy go through some more questioning myself it really is uh, yeah okay and Philip you and I talked about this on your on your podcast a while ago which and if you haven't listen to 40 watt podcast uh it is so fun and so cool and philip is hilarious and um just a a a gift to the guitar playing world but philip and i were talking about like all right it's really not hard to wander into 30 couple guitars and they're all good and you like them and they're cool but it's hard the hard thing is getting two or three guitars that if your house is on fire, you would want to run in and grab those after family, pets, friends, stuff in your house, like to get guitars that if you would lose them, you would, your ability to create in the world would be affected. That's the thing that I'm trying to do is to find a meaningful life, like a deep and meaningful, purposeful life um, that, yeah, to find the guitars that make you truly human. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's the thing. That's the goal. Um, so as I kind of walk through this, um, I'm getting there. Like I'm getting to where I've got those guitars. And I. it's also causing a problem that I'll talk about in later videos, which is I'm guitared up. Like I've got enough guitars. I, I have too many guitars. Um, and it makes it really complicated because I'm getting to where... I mean, the hard drugs for me these days are I become friends with the person. We talk about guitars. We become like good friends and I really like them. And then they build a guitar for me. Like I'm thinking of Rasmus. I'm freaking so excited. Um, I don't know if you were. Anyway, we're working on something. I, <laughs> um, I may have said something I shouldn't have said, but um, but yeah, like that. I mean, the boxwood back here, uh, my pageant that you can't really see because I got a chair in the way right here. Um, my pageant model one, this Rich Allen Telecaster, uh, my rude revelator. Like I'm getting to where like I'm getting those hits of the hard drugs of guitars built by friends that are completely my spec what i want in a guitar so with all of that said let's talk about if you can only have one acoustic guitar what are the bare bones kind of essential specs you need to look for and then what are my recommendations and then i'll break out those recommendations into three price ranges into super expensive like full-blown pro middle of the road prosumer level and then hey you need, you're gonna have to start cutting some grass you're gonna have to start raking leaves you know you're a teenager you're trying to buy your first cool guitar I'll give you those recommendations too. So the ideal specs, uh, oh, I think I skipped. Oh, I must've skipped. All right. So if you can only buy one acoustic guitar, I think it was supposed to go from here. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I, well, anyway, yes. So from here, you can only buy one acoustic guitar. Ideal specs on an acoustic guitar, solid top. That is the most important spec on a guitar. It Now it, helps if the back and sides are solid but the most important part of a guitar is construction and the tone of that guitar and the life of that guitar its ability to change and grow and become a better sounding guitar come from that top being a solid piece of wood now it's not going to be one piece of wood there still is a strip there's a you know it's a book matched 
pair. So it's two boards that are cut and then they're glued together. So some people will say it's not a solid top. It has two pieces. I get that. And I understand that. And it's probably just too literal of an interpretation of the phrase solid top. So it's a solid top acoustic guitar has a couple things going for it that are going to be really helpful to you in your guitar playing life. Number one, guitar is an organic or wood is an organic material and it will open up and grow and change. It won't like literally grow, but the chemical composition of that guitar is going to change as it ages. As it does, remember, okay, so think back to like earth science in seventh grade, eighth grade, and when you were having to draw out cell structures. And so, you know, you have a circular animal type cell structure. We're not talking about those. We're talking about, um, we're talking about plant cells. So plant cells have a cell wall and that cell wall, there's cellulose in that. And that's a more rigid, um, organic material. And the point of that is to maintain, oh boy, I'm getting deep into earth science here. But the point of that is to, uh, keep moisture inside to cause, what is it? This is where you talk about, um, what's that word? Hypa uh, osmosis. So you're looking for osmosis for, anyway, to retain moisture. But as plants, as a tree gets cut and it's no longer, it no longer is alive, that cell structure stays for a long time, five, six, seven years. And over time, as that guitar dries out, as that guitar cures, as those cell structures become more dehumidified, more crystalline, they start to rupture. And when they do, a couple things are going to happen. Number one, the color of the wood is going to start to change. It's going to become a little more yellow, a little more mellow. It's not as much like a sheet of white paper. But then you're also going to notice the guitar stops freaking out when it's like winter and summer and winter and summer. And your guitar starts to just be a little better at not being too high action in the summer and not too buzzy in the winter. And so the guitar does a whole lot of things. So solid top um, is a really important thing. And as that guitar grows, it's going to change. And those cell structures rupture. It's going to open up. That's the phrase that you keep hearing in lots of YouTube videos. Oh, this thing's really tight. It's really boxy. It hasn't opened up yet. Now, it is a thing that takes a long time. You have to be really patient to get a guitar to open up. For me, um, and we've talked about this on the channel, um, for me, I had a D35 that sounded great. And then it sounded amazing and it like changed. I borrowed, I ended up trading it to a friend of mine um, just for a couple months. Like we didn't trade, but we just lent each other, each other's guitars. So he gave me a D25 from Breed Love that was amazing. Um, and so that was a great guitar. He gave me that one. I gave him the D35 probably three or four months. We saw each other all the time, but we just kind of traded guitars for a while. And he said, while he had it, he's like, I got it. And it sounded really good. And then it, every time I played it and it was, so I'm excited that he got to have it during that time. Cause he was a great player who was just taking some time off and had gotten distracted with other things in life and hadn't been playing guitar as much. So anyway, guitars open up. So solid top is really important behind that. Um, solid mahogany back and sides are the next most helpful perk. And so for me, the reason I go mahogany is kind of my third point, which is, uh, no, sorry, my fourth point. So mahogany is very diverse sounding. It has an ability to cover a lot of ground. And so when you get a guitar like that, it's able to, all the notes are about the same volume. It doesn't sound like a D28 or like a Rosewood Dreadnought sounds like bluegrass. You hit it and you're like, oh my gosh, are, is they, are they playing All Fly Away? Like your brain goes to like, or is this Foggy Bottom Breakdown? Like all of a sudden you get to like, it just sounds like a thing or sounds like a song. And indeed... Uh, a mahogany back and sides dreadnought typically has a little more chill. It's a little more mellow than that. And it's not as specific. Now, the other thing you need to pay attention to is does it come with a hard case or a gig bag? A hard case is there's a transition happening. It's happening more on electric guitars than acoustic guitars, but still um, for most people, uh, they expect a hard case if you're going to spend some money. And then the last one, this probably should be obvious and should, probably should be higher on the list. This is not necessarily a hierarchy, but it is just kind of my flow of thoughts. I'm like solid top, most important thing 
uh, solid back and sides, great. Mahogany, preferably back and sides. And then with that, is each note about the same volume? And you can kind of see the flow of this. And then all that is, of course, tied together. Like, it has to be easy to play. It doesn't have to have a pickup. I didn't put that on this list because... Sorry, I'm just going to... I find myself, like, I'll pick up a drink and I'll keep talking. And I'll watch this video back later. And I realize I just held that cup. I never took a sip of water. My throat was dry, and I just talked for like six minutes holding a can of LaCroix or whatever. So, anyway, um, I don't worry about a pickup because I can put a pickup in a guitar. Pretty easy. You can do it. Most cool shops can do it. Let me come over here to the questions um, or to the comments. And um, yeah, Jeremy's. Jeremy's talking people out of buying guitars so you can snatch them up. That's right. That's not right. Hey! Hey, buddy. Bought a triple O SM on back. Hey. No, hashtag no, no regrets. No regrets. Good. That's exciting, man. That's a fun guitar. Triple O. Is the S slot? Triple O SM probably would be. My brain's trying to figure that one out. That's exciting. Um, ideal spec, single O. You don't need a dreadnought, y'all. That's true. Single O is tiny, 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 tiny. Double O, triple O, OM, all great. Oh, you are, Mark, you're on the money. So let me, let me come back over here and, uh, I'll show you what I'm working on. All right. Slot headstock. Uh, love my satin all mahogany Martin wide neck. Yep. Um, so what's wrong with, there's nothing wrong. And this is all preferential. Like this is all opinion. And, uh, and even us like Phillips in here, he knows a ton about this stuff and the guitars he recommends are different than what I'm going to recommend. And it all, I mean, all of us wisdom, oh boy, this is probably too much of a rabbit trail. Um, we're all trying to offer wisdom into the world and wisdom is right. Like, uh, it is experience plus introspection or retrospection. And so for me, I've just found that mahogany guitars, I've owned a bunch of guitars, I've owned a bunch of rosewood guitars. And for me, rosewood guitars are loud, boomy, bassy, and very specific sounding. That kind of gets me in trouble in most guitar situations. I'm not a loud singer. So if you're a loud singer, they work great. If you're a lead player, I'm a rhythm player. And so anyway, that's where for me. So there's nothing wrong. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with rosewood guitars, for sure. Um, it's all just preferential. Yeah. Wisdom isn't always absolute. That's true. Okay. So, let me come back over here. And bada bing, bada boom. So, what would I recommend? One, to rule them all, has to be a Martin D18. Now, this can go a bunch of different ways. There's kind of four or five, six layers of this guitar. But for me, a D18 is basically the perfect guitar for most people. It sounds very diverse. It can cover a ton of ground. It is a beautiful guitar to look at. It is going to sound great day one, and it is going to continue to sound better and better and better over time. It has been a mainstay. This is an F-150. Like, this is just a thing that gets a freaking job done. And so if you want a D18, it does D18 things. Now, they've gotten expensive. Like, I mean, they've always been kind of a working man's guitar. Now, another option beneath this, and I'll give some specific examples of other guitars that are in this same range. And we can also talk about, like, I'm starting to recommend Dreadnoughts less. But, number one, uh, oh boy. <laughs> it's gone. I lost it. I had a thought, and it's gone now. Oh, guitars, other guitars that I would recommend in this same kind of hierarchy. Just below this, the D17 series is pretty fun. They're spruce tops. They look good. They're kind of cool. They're kind of funky. Darker finishes, sunbursts, but similar kind of guitar, much more affordable, probably under two grand, right? If a 17 is over two grand, that's crazy. Then you get into a D16, high teen thousand, you know, like high 1800 bucks, 1600 bucks, something like that. Um, they used to be less. Everything used to be less in the world before. But uh, D16s are monstrous guitars. And then you have like what uh, what we were just talking about over here, like the Triple O SM, like you have some of these Martin kind of special runs. But as long as you can run them through the metric of solid top, 
sounds good, sounds diverse, easy to play, all those things. So other guitars that I really like and I would recommend um, would be, okay, so you've got the D18 over here. Then, um, and I have a couple Eastmans coming in the next couple weeks from my friend Doug at Guitar San Diego. So Guitar San Diego, cool shop. I want to go out and visit. Doug and I met... Uh, Doug and I met at the FERC um, factory tour in the Czech Republic. And so he has a great shop and he's super fun, super kind. And he just, yeah. So uh, I have his link in the description down below. So there's an affiliate link for the D18 over here. And then there's contact information. So if you're interested in either one of these. So let's talk about these. Number one, the Eastman E1D. This is amazingly affordable. $575. I think pretty sure it's all solid wood just sounds great um really fun guitar they play really well they just are really reliable they also come with a good gig bag and so at 575 that guitar hits so many of the metrics that you would need that's a guitar you could live with for a long 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 time and it would be a really good guitar plays really well and it's at a price point that it won't break the bank and you can take it more places. You can be more daring with it. And uh, yeah, very exciting. Cool guitar. Uh, yeah, Doug's going to send me a couple of these to check out. I'm excited. Uh, I've only played one of these in person, but big fan. Uh, behind that, and this is actually a really fun recommendation, um, is the FERC Blue. So that's the entry level of the FERC guitars. They have just recently committed to they are now making all solid wood guitars. Every guitar that they make is going to be solid woods. But they're also going to start at $1,000, which this one is $9.95. Um, it's mahogany top, mahogany back and sides. It's, I think it's technically um, either Sapelli or Kaya. Kaya is African mahogany. Different species, same family from my understanding. But these guitars, they play... Uh, I keep trying to point. They play great. They they play excellently. They still have the same amazing the, the innovations that I talked about from the FERC video when I went and did the tour. They have an open pour finish that's really great and resilient and light and tough. Um, sounds really good. The other thing, they also have uh, the neck reinforcement system, the DR. My brain is not working. Friday afternoons, late in the day. Um, but they have the truss rod system and then they also have the voicing. So they're also a, a custom voiced top. So they get analyzed and to make sure that they're going to be a very beautiful musical thing. So anyway, so if you're interested in, in any of the three of these, this is generally my recommendation. If you can only have one acoustic guitar, this is where I would point most people is going to be, you know, get a Martin. Martins are great. Get a FERC. FERC are incredibly well built. Uh, get an Eastman. They're really good value for the money. So Yeah. Um, oh, do I have an extra one here? Oh, look, huh. look, I, I just changed the size of that one. Is that annoying on the FERC blue? Anyway, so now if you can only own one, one electric guitar, let me come over here to the comments. See if people are talking crap. Who's talking? Oh, yes. Yep. Plus one on Laravays. I think I have a Laravay coming that we might get to do a giveaway with. And it's a freaking nice one. So. Laravays, they're definitely on my list. If I had to pick used guitars that you would look for, and they've shot up in value because people have gotten wise, but the DO3, the DO2, the LO3, um, even the P, the parlor size from Larve, incredible value. Are Martins worth the money? I think so. I love Martin guitars. Now, with that said, I don't own any Martins right now um, because I have figured out a hack, which is buy boutique guitars used is my main thing. So I don't have a Martin because I have this one over here, which is a Haas and Dalton TDM. I paid $2,000 for this. So I paid $900 less than a new, eight, new D18 and I have a fully custom hand-built guitar that's made 30 minutes from my house. Um, yep, layer base for sure. 18 and an OM Dream Team. Dude, that's a good duo. Yep. Okay. So the D18, and let's talk about Dreadnoughts versus OMs. I'm getting to where I'm, po I'm pointing most people towards OMs, triple O's, or double O's. Um, OMs especially because they have the same scale length typically as the Dreadnought. And if you get into the M size from Martin, 
you're getting a guitar that basically is the same depth as a dreadnought has the same scale length as a dreadnought but is still a smaller body so it's more comfortable and it just sits on you better it plays better it's not as far out well no it's the same far out same depth but really cool guitars and um so yeah absolutely all right um what did tech say mr howard howard says looking for an heirloom guitars Looking for heirloom guitars to play and sing with and leave for my kids and grandkids. Favorite is an Eastman E20 SS VSB, their version of an AJ45. Dude, that is that is cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Eastmans are great guitars. Chunky neck, though. Ooh. You had me at chunky neck. I've been described similarly. D18, playing one of those right now. That's, yeah. Yeah, and Philip, you got a Larave. What what's yours? You've told me. I know we've talked about it. Um, African mahogany sounds almost the same as genuine mahogany, but it is a different family. Okay, yeah, I knew that they were similar. I mean, they are both trees, um, but and yeah. So anyway, I just passed up a used Larvae about five years ago. Still haunts me. So wonderful. I sold. I had an OM nine that I sold for fifteen hundred dollars. That is still. I mean, it was probably. It's like. Probably the best OM guitar I've ever had. So. <laughs> yeah, we need a You Had Me at Chunky Neck. Yep. T-shirt. I'm into that. All right. Let's go back over here. So if you can only buy one electric guitar, let's talk about electric guitars. Um, Philip and I are going to continue to disagree here. And we're going to go a couple different ways. So for me, I think the biggest thing you're going to need to think about is... It needs to be an alder, ash, or basswood body. Basswad. Basswad body. Freaking typos. Um, or basswood. Now, uh, it's not basswood. Don't know why. It's confusing. Um, but uh, alder, ash, alder, ash, basswad. Um, needs to be easy to play. Uh, that's the biggest thing with electric guitars is that they just need to be comfortable. So for me, SGs are the most uncomfortable guitar followed behind Rickenbackers. Like to me, they just aren't fun to play. It's the same. I won't talk about ovations. I promised myself, promised you, I wouldn't talk about ovations this week. Um, but I just, uh, guitars have to be comfortable. Now, the other thing behind this Electric guitars, if you can only have one, I mean, because if you only have one guitar, you have to be able to cover a lot of ground. And so you need a guitar that's going to be able to do everything. And not many of us are Joe Bonamassa, and we can't do a Les Paul and get all those Tele and Strat sounds out of it. You certainly can. If you spend a lot of time, you could get a Les Paul, and you could make it sound like a lot of other things. But in my opinion, uh, Les Pauls are too much. Just kind of in everything they're too they're too bassy they're too harsh they have too much gain they and i know that i'm going to offend people with this and your results will vary your mileage will vary but for me a les paul is not the right guitar for most people it doesn't yeah especially if there's any crossover between electric guitar and acoustic guitar as far as skills motor you know like just a lot of things so the last one is um Needs to have a hard case or gig bag. Gig bags are more acceptable on electric guitars, especially if you can get one of the nicer, like a mono case or um, even I've got some really nice Gator gig bags up there that are really great. Um, so uh, you also need a general design, and I can talk about this. These last two kind of pair together. So you need a general design, and you need something that's customizable. So let me sh I'll show you a guitar to kind of show my point of what we're talking about here. Um, so the example I'm going to show you is weird. It's a full custom guitar. This is, sorry. Oh boy. So this is my rude revelator. Now this guitar is very strange. It's a completely, it's a unique body shape. Um, and it's completely custom, but with this, there are a couple things that we should talk about. Like this guitar, um, when you're looking at a guitar for you, for me, this guitar covers so much ground, it really kind of matches this with the exception of it's expensive and it's boutique. So anyway, but you need to have an electric guitar 
The advantage to electric guitars, in my opinion, is the customization. The ability to change out parts and to get things. Now, the problem is when you get guitars, and Ibanez is probably the biggest offender. And then behind that, it's probably, I've seen um, Reverend does this a lot as well. Um, Duesenberg does this a lot as well. Duesenberg's freaking expensive, so I don't know why I would recommend them. But what I would say is even on this guitar, there's still a lot of parts that can come from other guitars that we could totally change out. So, yeah, I can't change the pickguard on this, but I can change the, you know, it's just a cut telly bridge. It's standard knobs. It's a standard Les Paul style switch. I mean, this guitar still gets to be really customizable. It still has fender. Why am I holding it with two fingers? Too much risk. No reward. But if you're looking at a guitar, you just need to be able to be customizable. So you can like sit and dream on the Stumac website or the All Parts website. And you can just kind of dream up like, well, what if I had, you know, on my guitar, what if I changed the control plate to volume tone and a dip switch in the middle to do a coil tap? What if I put a humbucker in the bridge of that guitar? So that's, that's the thing too, is like the advantage in my opinion of electric guitars is the ability to customize them and to make them more playable and more helpful. With that said, I also think you need a guitar that is pretty simple and yeah, simple and can still cover a ton of ground. So for me, there is one solution. And if you know me, if you know my recommendations, my picks on guitars, of course, it's a freaking Telecaster. Like I have, let's, let's play a game. How many Telecasters do I have? I have a Pink Paisley. I have, uh, okay, this isn't as exciting. There are three, okay. I have my Rich Allen Blackguard. Then I have another Rich Allen over here. Um, this Eldorado. But I also know that I have probably four more hanging around. I think I have six total right now. So, but anyway, so for me, the Telecaster is basically the perfect guitar. Oh, that's funny. I didn't mean to leave up this whole time. The whole time. Um, I've been, yeah. Uh, I do have a Strat. Let me show you my Strat. I have an American Pro 2 that I freaking love. Now, this was, I got to be part of the launch for the Fender American Pro 2. It's like one of the, I mean, one of the best like it was the first thing that I felt like it was a, yeah, it was a huge accomplishment and an honor to get asked, like to get an email from someone with like at fender.com just saying like, Hey, we're launching this guitar and we love your channel and we'd like to help you. So, um, and we'd like to get your perspective on this guitar. So anyway, I, I love strats. I'm not opposed to people getting strats for sure. Um, yeah. So for me, I just think, I think, by the time you add a tremolo, and this isn't just for beginners, but if you only had one guitar, a Strat is not enough guitar, in my opinion. If you only have one guitar, I think you need a bitey, uh, yeah, you need a bitey single coil that can do way more that can than just like cl clean twangy telly stuff. You, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, less sorry, Telecasters can do metal. Um, and they're getting there now to where people are okay with seeing that in that heavy kind of music. But anyway, to me, Telecasters can do so much more. Um, yeah, a Strat. The, the main weakness for me on a Strat, and this is most people's complaint, the bridge pickup is just a little wimpy. I wish it had a little more of that bite, a little more of that rock and roll kind of thing. But for me, a Strat neck pickup is the best sound on pretty much any electric guitar. Like, it's just my that super smushy, like, billowy neck pickup is so good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I didn't recommend... Uh, yeah, I love Telly's, but it's the strap for the win. That's interesting. Yeah, and yeah, like I said, we can all be totally different on this. Love your Brian May, your Brian May guitar special. Dude, how freaking cool. Da, 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 da. That's so good. Uh, any tips on string spacing on the stay on the bridge? I have a recording King RO328 with a weird feeling on the... Oh, uh, 
<laughs> Edge of the Red Board. Um, that's, yeah. Okay. Could be a couple things. Bridge spacing, saddle spacing, or sorry, bridge spacing, nut spacing. Could be using strings that are too slack. Are you playing in something lower than standard? That's a pain, but yeah, I get that. What? hey -o. Hey, Jeremy, greetings from India. Holy cow. Hey, Ronnie. I must admit that you were very influential in my decision of, to buy a FERC. I now own the proud owner of a FERC yellow GCCR. It is such a dream. Dude, we are brothers. I have the same guitar. Well, I have the deluxe, but mine is a GCC. I, I forget. <clears throat> but same tone woods and just an amazing guitar. I, I played it for probably two and a half hours last night as well. And love it. Let me come back down here. Strat doesn't even make your top five. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, a Strat does a thing, but it doesn't do all the things. And if you're only getting one guitar, then you need to have that. Whoa, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. Brandon just became a channel member. So channel members get perks that are really fun. You get early access to videos. You get Q&As with me. Um, you get kind of access to the community of people. Um, we also have kind of a network. If you're selling a guitar, you know, we've seen guitars just kind of come and go between the people that are in the crowd. So Brandon, thank you. That is super exciting. Um, yeah. Sick burn, Ryan. Because <laughs> there are also like, I mean, the Strat lives on. I mean, this is like a close, uh, this is my shreddy metal guitar. Um, and so this is a close and uh, carbon fiber neck, really beautiful. But this is, has the Fishman Fluence pickups with, this is the most satisfying switch sound. Oh yeah. Super satisfying. All right, so um, let's talk about those at three different price ranges for them electric guitars. Yeah, so of course it has to be a Telecaster. And so for me, like the Fender, oh, those are the same. Um, so the Fender American Pro 2 Strat or the American Vintage uh, 50, I just couldn't find one on Sweetwater they're all left-handed and it, I didn't, I, okay, listen, I knew that I could just put a picture and flip it, but I would know that the decal is backwards and I would know the truth. And so anyway, I couldn't find a picture of a, yeah, I don't know how this happened. Um, I know how it happened. I just was hanging out with Ryan. Uh, Ryan Doval was over playing guitar. We were just goofing around and then it, it's not Ryan's fault. He's probably watching. Sorry, buddy. Not your fault at all. Just me not managing my time well. Just goofing around in here. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, my gosh, it's 150. I have nine minutes to, like, yeah. I had to get these things done, exported, uploaded, put in here, get the camera set up, turn the desk, get the light on, get these lights on, uh, change the battery in the camera, and pee. So I didn't get a cup of coffee, you know? But, and I also put a couple titles in here. But anyway, so the American Pro 2, super fun. And then the last one at three different price ranges like a telecaster it's super fun because it's ubiquitous and then it can cover a ton of ground and there are a few like in the debate between acoustic guitars and electric guitars or just comparing the differences in those two worlds it is really hard for me to make the case for um for american made custom boutique electric guitars because you can change the parts and the pieces and if you get a good if you get a really good guitar tech, you can make an electric guitar play, feel, and sound like uh, a custom guitar for way less. So anyway, so for me, the ideal kind of uh, electric guitars, there's three options. So let's go from the lowest to the highest. So the lowest being this first one, which is uh, 419 bucks, the new Classic Vibes. They are great. Downsides to them is you're trading off a lot of the parts and just the, mostly the quality of the electronics, but swap out pickups. The other downside is the finish. It's going to be a thicker polyurethane finish, but beautiful guitars. No one would fault you 
for these guitars. Um, if they, you know, if you play them out and about, they're great. You'll still get some people that would kind of look at you weird because it says, it says, Squire, when you get a real guitar, you, sh you sh let me know when you get a real guitar like a Fender. My cousin Ricky has one. I don't have one. I can't afford it, but, you know, whatever. So um, it also is interesting that Fender's business model involves, um, they're not super precious about their name or their logo. Like, you can find a guitar that says Fender at pretty much every price point. It wasn't that way, like, when I was in middle school, when I was first getting into guitar, you couldn't find, like, and maybe I just didn't see many of the Japanese, um, yeah, maybe I just didn't find enough of the Japanese Fenders, because there were lots of squires and lots of people I knew like scratched it out with like a pocket knife or something. But uh, then the American, uh, the sorry, the Fender players tellies are really really good, and they come with a gig bag. They're eight hundred and forty nine bucks. They're st they're made in Mexico, which so the bells in my head still go off. Like that's a lot of money for a guitar made in Mexico, but it's the way of the world, um, and the quality of those guitars has really come up. Since I was, you know, since I was buying that kind of level of guitar. And then you can kind of live in the pro level, the American pro level, which is uh, $17.99-ish. Kind of puts you around um, the American Pro 2, which that Strat I just showed you is an American Pro 2. It is unbelievably good quality. Like it just sounds and plays and is just wonderful and so, so good. So... Come back over to the comments. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great option too. Um, so the question is, how about a Yamaha FGX3? Same specs as a D18, has a great pickup, only 1049. Yeah, there are. I mean, that recipe is so good. Um, you know, sit like a spruce top, mahogany back and sides, dreadnought OM triple O, something like that. Um, that's a great one. No uglier, no uglier squire headstock. Was it, did that one get you? Oh, it is. I mean, it's just the tiniest bit different. Yeah. What gets me is the quality of the tuners. That's the biggest. Uh, and then, and then the other one is you can't really see it, but that little black doodly do in there gets me. But yeah. So yeah. So okay. So I'll close out some of those thoughts. So. If you can only have one electric guitar, I'd do a Telecaster. If you can only have one acoustic guitar, I'd do a D18. Now, both of those, there's so many options that are so much more affordable and diverse than that. But, I mean, the big thing is, like, you would have to have a guitar that covers a lot of ground in either of those situations. Now, I don't have titles for this, but I do want to kind of bring up a couple more thoughts that I had. So, uh, so like... Uh, Okay, the strategy, once you get to where, like, okay, like, I've got a guitar, and I like it, I've got some money, I've got some time, it's not the end of the world, I can get a second guitar, that's when I start employing the next strategy. So for me, I then go from, like, at first, my priority is only, what is the most diverse-sounding guitar that I can get, uh, to all of a sudden, I then go, like, okay, how weird can I get with it? Um, how extreme can I push out... Uh, the two guitars that I have. So for me, for years, my favorite duo, the favorite pair of guitars I've owned at the same time for years was a 1961 Gibson J50 that was round shoulder, Sitka spruce top, mahogany back and sides, thumpy, beautiful, wonderful, very warm, muddy sounding almost, like just earthy. Everything about the guitar was like dark and wonderful and warm and thick. I've been described the same way. Then on the other end of that, I had a D, uh, I had a Martin D 35. And so that guitar was like way punchier and brighter and, and like, it's still very bassy. Both those guitars were very bassy. So I didn't have like total extremes of those two. But for me, I all of a sudden started going like trying to visualize like, OK, like specific kind of tones of guitars and very diverse tones of guitars and then very dark sounding guitars and very bright sounding guitars. And I started to kind of visualize these 
And so that's where we start getting into the, um, like, if you need to figure out how to coordinate your guitars, once you get past that first, like, my first guitar, I can only have one guitar. Once you get into trying to conceptualize, that really is where Right Guitars Faster comes in. And uh, I'll go to this one, and I'll come back over here. So that's, and this feels like a shameless plug, and it's not. Um, but it is like, I have thought about this for years. I've written about this. I've talked about this. I've traveled the country, helping people figure this thing out, which is how do I get a collection of guitars that work together? So anyway, without going, which I've, I've sprinkled little bits here and there. If you watch my FERC video, the uh, two FERC videos ago, where I have my yellow deluxe at the river. At the end of that, I explain how I conceptually understand where my guitars go and how I invite new guitars into my life. And so, um, with all of that said, um, yeah, so once I get above three guitars is when you start being like, all right, I need a different arithmetic. But one guitar has to be diverse. Two guitars get to be really specific and get weird with it. So for me... That's kind of how I cover it. Now, please, if you're interested, check out the course. But anyway, so now we'll spend the next couple minutes. I have to leave in a couple minutes. I have to go pick up my kids from summer camp. They've been out. Uh, somebody asked a question. Where was it? Scott, dude, the hammer. What a freaking name. I would love to own a 60s Telecaster for acoustic. Go for a custom build if I could afford it. You, could, you just have to find. It's kind of like a contractor. Like if you're renovating your house. The people who know they're good all of a sudden get expensive. But the people who are just, it's the sweet spot. You don't want somebody that's building their first guitar because those are rough. You want somebody that's built like seven to 15 guitars and they're still trying to get enough people to know who they are. And so anyway, that's where I got it in it, the perfect moment with Ben Padgett and this guitar. It is amazing. This is the second, I think third one he's built. But got in at the right moment on that. Um, need a humbucker in the neck. No way. One thing I would say, I did think about, like, um, someone traded me this. This is a 70s mocha. Hey, if anybody wants this, um, does anybody want this? I'll make you a deal. I just need to get rid of this thing. Um, so this is a Squire, um, one of the mocha HSS 70s spec. It's not really 70s spec because it has a four bolt neck. But anyway, whatever. Um, this guitar is basically brand new. A friend of mine bought it who's an acoustic player. Didn't really ask me what I recommended, and I didn't recommend this. And he just didn't enjoy it that much. But um, it's a very cool guitar. HSS, That's if you're looking for diverse and does like a Strat that does lots of not Stratty things, HSS is probably the way to go. Don't I miss a humbucker in the telly? Kind of. Um, yeah. Are Colton guitars worth the money? I have a 69D28 with Brazilian Rosewood. I want to be in a nicer case than just the original. Not sure if it's about the car that's too much. Uh, so Colton cases, if you don't know, I mean, they're $1,500. bucks. they are very expensive. Uh, there are great options in the three to $500 range. There are other people that are even competitors to Colton that are um, in that same price range. The... Bur, uh, Burchette guitars, um, gauge, gray, gray, um, gray delivers all of his guitars with some brand. I think the cases are like five to 600 bucks. So you can get a fiberglass case, uh, a lot more affordable than a Carlton. I don't love Carlton cases. They're just heavy and they're kind of big to deal with. So you can look at like if you could find like a use like a dog bone handle, like a, a Geb case, Geeb case, however you pronounce it. Um, but yeah. Um, go freaky. Hey, any recommendations on capos for Furt guitars? So the Furt guitars have a very flat radius. So I have found I have the G seventh on it now. Don't love it. My favorite capo is still the page. They're all in the house, maybe. Oh, I bet one's in here. Ha <laughs> ha! I did it. So uh, this is still probably my favorite capo. Um, let's see if I can get it to. Nope. It's locked on. It's on my face. Um, but I love the page capos. Let's see if I can hold it so you can see it. 
Um, but yeah, really easy. I like that they apply even pressure from the back. They squeeze the neck instead of squeezing from the side. Um, yep. Yep, that's a close, but no cigar. Fender American Pro 2 uh, Tele or Nash? Nearly the same price these days. Um, Nash are good guitars. They still feel like parts casters to me. Like they still feel like an assembly of other parts that don't necessarily work together. And they've taken some heat for being parts casters. Like they buy their parts and then assemble them, but lots of guitar companies do that. So I can't fault them for that. I loved the, I had a blonde 52 a couple of years ago or a white 52 a couple of years ago. That was a freaking monster. Um, yeah, that's where, I mean, it's still pretty similar to, to my rich Allen Blackguard. Um, yep. This is an all parts neck on this one. And then like a custom made body. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably go with the Fender. That's just me. So many comments. I'm trying to keep up. This is exciting. What a day. Look at us. What a day. I get a D18 and a, I get a Telecaster and a D18. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out like very Bruce Springsteen, right? Well, uh, Takamini. Also another brand. If I talk about Takamini, people get pissed. And I get emails. Firefly Baritone with a P90. Dude, that would be cool. Ooh. Like J50s. I'm sure you've been asked this, but what is the best new modern acoustic guitar that you've played? If you could only have one. <sighs> um, Best modern acoustic guitar. I love... I'm not a huge vintage guy. Like, I have a couple vintage guitars, like, uh, over this... Over here... 74 um guild d40 what else do i have i have a guild southern jumbo right now a 68 um but i mean my the modern deluxes from martin are amazing um i also love callings i would love to own a callings d1 i've never owned one of those um the iris df is an amazing guitar that's probably my favorite uh it's probably my favorite guitar um yeah i'm glad you like that terry terry what do you think of my current acoustic trio dude you have such a good uh hang on let me think so okay so you have one of my favorite guitars i've played in the last while which is a um so terry has a santa cruz uh basically a d18 like a mahogany round-shouldered spruce top um 12 fret dreadnought and it is magical to play and then you do you have a d21 a d28 a 12 fret d28 i think i'm trying to remember what you have and then the last one you just got is an all mahogany 15 that you just changed over to way release um any interest in rick beato's signature gibson it's super it's cool i like it i like rick um, it's a fun guitar and it's, I mean, no one has modern guitar players ears and eyes right now more than, or as much as, as Rick. Um, I do think Rick is a bit contentious, not in a bad way. He's not controversial, but he always seems to have his dander up about stuff, you know? So Dan, you've got a great collection of guitars um oh okay that's right that's right so terry you've got an m36 the triple 15s and then that santa cruz waterloo's are nice and dry are dry toned guitars similar to good gibsons that's a it's a good question it's also an interesting way to say it um so i like waterloo's because okay so they are a very specific sound they're and they're a very specific sound of guitar. So they're thumpy, they're bassy, they don't resonate that much, but they have a magical chimey thing that happens kind of instantaneously. Um, they fill a room in a way, like they have this warm, it's like, it feels like you're playing a jazz guitar, like you're playing a 335 or a 330, 
and you have the tone rolled off just a little bit and all of a sudden man it just um yeah so anyway uh yeah it shouldn't matter but you have a higher chance of getting a gig with with name brand guitars a gig but you have a higher chance of getting a gig with a with a name brand guitar competence isn't often associated with a name brand or boutique brands for paying gigs competence is often associated with name brand or boutique brands for paying gigs that's interesting i haven't experienced that but i also like i mean i usually play in places that i don't know they don't know about music they don't know about guitars the last as I, I mean it's been a couple of years so basically since when we were in louisiana i played out three times a, a month it was a pretty normal thing to play at a restaurant or a bar but i would also those were gigs were like hey we need you to play for four hours and um oh so much aaron aaron short says hey man hope you're well been playing the lyric pickup uh and irs this week uh sounds great with in-ear monitors dude that's exciting um, they just released the app this week for the LR bags, um, tone print. So I'm going to work on that. I had a thought on that, which I need to, I had done it a couple months ago and I did it when guitar strings were kind of dying. And so because that DI takes so much account of how your guitar sounds through the microphone and the camera, what I realized is, oh, I kind of did it with strings that were on the way out, kind of thumpy, kind of dead. So anyway. Yeah, Hugh says, I disagree. I'm just realizing your picture. That is, that's funny. Um, Hugh says, I disagree. I don't think people booking gigs know or care about your equipment. That's been my experience too. I don't know. Mark says, dude, it was, Mark, you know, it was freaking Lola, um, which it was a fun restaurant in downtown Covington, Louisiana, but, oh man, I'm playing for four hours. And then at one point they said like, hey, we noticed you repeated some songs. And it's like in four hours, I've run out. I got nothing else. Um, and uh, yeah. 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 As the chief says, no one cares what you're playing as long as you do it. Well, I think that's for the most part, I think that's true. Um, yeah. That was the most PC soft touch description of Rick Beato. <laughs> I wouldn't make it to his age if I was as worked up about everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, um, I know he, so he, is he controversial? Does he like pick fights? Is he rude? Is he mean? I don't think so. Like when you look at like Glenn Fricker, like Glenn is like intense. Um, and it's, some of it seems to be a character um, or just, I mean, that's that's hard to say. So like, I've found it myself, like as a YouTuber, um, these live shows are different because it's like real people and I'm talking to people and I'm seeing actual interactions. But man, like when you make enough YouTube videos, you become, it becomes a, a character of yourself or a very specific part, like a razor thin part of your actual personality. So anyway, that's, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's kind of where I'm where I'm coming from, is that I can kind of see the character of what he's playing. Anyway, he's like your college professors. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a sweet guy. He's he's amazingly talented. What? Okay, let's talk about that. What actually gets me about Rick? And this is, I don't know. I'll just, I'll just say it. I'm not going to give any preface. He'll have these videos and he'll explain a thing that I understand where he's like, Hey, if you feel like you're, you know, if you feel like you're one, four, fives or, you know, uh, let me I'll start that again. He'll say something where he's like, Hey, if you feel like your guitar playing is kind of stale or boring and you're doing this, I'm like, Oh, I have that problem. I do that. I'm stuck in that same place. He's like, well then just do the Mixlodeon, do the Dorian, do the, and all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's, it's like there's a jump from like you have this problem you feel this way yep yep 
help me out. And then all of a sudden it just leaps into way too complicated. Um, and I, like I, I, a central conviction of my life is that clarity lives just on the other side of complexity. But most people, like the real heroes, the real people we need in the world are people that can actually come back and explain things clearly, can walk people through the process into mastery. Not everyone needs to master things, but um, for him, he just gets kind of hung up on like, he's he's losing the forest through the trees and it's too complicated, in my opinion. Um, I don't think his signature's out yet. They announced it like a year ago. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Beato is great. He does try to be Bourdain a bit. That's interesting. You have four hours are gonna hear. Uh, yep. Well, I, yeah, I wasn't noodling. I lots of melodies, so lots of just like for me, it would be like finger style acoustic. Most of it wasn't sung. I would sing some songs and have some people sing along with me. Um, but it would just be like for me, it would just be like a seven and a half minute version of like. Foo Fighters, you know, ever long, but it's in dad get and it's like super chimey and open and like lots of nuanced, -y, subtle finger styly, big reverb stuff. So anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, any closing thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I don't know. Best guitar you have is the one you already have. Best guitar for you is the one you already have. I think just be careful with that. Um, That's a good question. What, so what explains Massive's or Beato's massive audience and continued growth? Um, he is prolific. Um, his production value is incredible. He's really interesting to listen to. He has amazing stories. He has great insights. He interviews like current wonderful guitar players. It's just, I mean, so much of what he's doing. Like he is like, he is the big fish. Um, and yeah, yeah, I mean, he does an exceptional thing. And I don't mean to, like, I'm not picking on him at all. It's just, for me, I get lost pretty quickly. I also, I don't watch a ton of other guitar YouTube because I don't want it to, like, change that much of what I'm trying to do in my guitar stuff. Oh, that's a great point. Um, yeah, uh, Beato helps ordinary people hear music better. That's really true. Um, a lot. And as someone like I have a pretty natural ear and I've always struggled with music theory. Cause to me, I just, I hear stuff and I can kind of figure it out, but yeah. Um, yeah. Also what Sonia said. So his, what makes this song great reviews. It's incredible. Cause it's, it's kind of like if you love five watt world, it's kind of what Keith is doing, but it's also on this deeper level of, um, like what makes this song great? Why did this work? Why is it catchy? They're they're awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Beato's music knowledge is unsurprised on YouTube. Yeah, unsurpassed. Absolutely. <laughs> Rick Beato is basically reading the title of a music theory textbook. Then flipping to page 300. That's a good way to say it. Yeah. Did I see the Paisley Acoustasonic? I did. Love it. I love the Acoustasonics. I regret, I regret trading away, um, my, the player, the thousand dollar one. Loved that guitar. Um, let's see. Yeah, I like, dude, I like Keith a lot. We talked a little bit about a year ago, trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out if we could do a video together or talk about like the history of Martin guitars or something like that. And, um, he sent me, it was a pretty curt email saying like, you do what you do. I do what I do. Be good. <laughs> it's interesting. Anyway. Oh, those are great. Yeah. I plan on buying a J185 original. So good. Uh, Paisley Acoustasonic is the best Acoustasonic. All right, I'm going to email Sweetwater and see if I can get one. And I just, I want to do more videos with them. Like, they're, I feel like I finally get who that guitar is for, what that guitar is about. And I just love them. They're so good. 
So what acoustic should I buy? What's your budget? So the other questions that I do, because I that's a question I get all the time, and it usually comes down to what are your influences? What's your budget? What's your timeline? Um, and what guitars speak to you? Yeah, it usually kind of gets, yeah, that's when it really kind of gets down to is, um, so, okay, so, yeah, 2,000 pounds, that's plenty of money. Um, I mean, I always run it through, like, what's the best guitar you can get, and what, and what, of those guitars, which one is built closest to you, because those are so fun, you start kind of finding people that are just awesome. So, um, like, I think about Atkin guitars. They're made in the UK. Super fun. Great guitars. We're doing a video. I'm going to do a video with my friend Sam, uh, who is slinging strings on Instagram. He's another guitar hunter from uh, down in the valley. He's in Roanoke, Virginia. Roanoke! And, uh, but uh, he has two Atkins, and I have two Ferks. And we're going to get together and make a video um, called Americans Reacting to European Guitars. So, anyway... Whew. Uh, hang on. Where'd it go? Do you have any opinion on Takamini? I like Takaminis. Um, I like the higher end ones. I think most of them are okay. Uh, I don't love the pickup systems they come with, but I mean, some of the pickup systems sound great. I just don't like the big hole in the side of a guitar. I love the, uh, what are they? The, the GBs, the Garth Brooks, especially the sound hole that looks like a freaking guitar. How cool is that? Um, yeah. A cop K35. That's what... Um, so, uh, I've only played a couple cops, but I played the one... I had one... Sam had one who I'm going down to to play guitar with in Roanoke. He's incredible. And um, he had one that was a K35, and it was my one of my favorite round shoulders I've ever played. They're just so wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah, the uh, want to see an America an, an Acoustasonic Pro, the American Jazzmaster um, Acoustasonic. It that's what I found. It took so much brain power to run it correctly, because you have a five way selector switch, two knobs, so you have volume and tone, but it also works as blend and boost in other regards, or yeah, blend and boost. And so then you have like big dreadnought, small dreadnought big jumbo one jumbo small body small body and so you have three different versions and you're blending between the two with the back switch but if you're counterclockwise on the back you get to the second position is the transducers on the body then the last one is just the bridge pickup and if you're turned counterclockwise you get the humbucker with a 25 decibel boost and it doesn't it works well if you're going into like an electric guitar amp or a guitar amplifier it doesn't work when you run into a PA that happened like during COVID I took it to church. I played it out and I got like horrible feedback cause I just forgot. And I flipped back to the bridge to try and do like a small little like lead thing. And it just like whistled and hummed and blew up. And so anyway, yes hey you yeah that's dude that's awesome i'm glad you're in here we got to figure out what day we can do it next week um so stoked for the atkin firk video traded my 47 uh for a 43 and i'm blown away that's awesome i'm dude i'm excited to see it i've only played one atkin before this which was at carter vintage guitars in nashville and it was uh like a an lg2 thing no 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 Maybe I've played two. I played an LG2. There was a Sunburst. And then I played a, a D18-ish thing that I liked a lot. All right. Well, it is time for me. Oh, boy. I got to go.
Time for me to rock and roll. But this has been a really, really good live show. Probably the best one in a long time. If you have it in your heart, think about becoming a channel member or a patron. Channel members are easy. In this video, you should be able to just click um, just down below, I guess. And you can become a channel member for just a couple bucks a month. You get early access to videos. And uh, that is that is a direct line to helping me keep making these videos, take care of my family, and uh, really, really thankful. So anyway, consider if you would doing that or check out the shop and see what is for sale on the website. So anyway, thanks, everybody. Um, but, yep. All right. That's all I got. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. Uh, go fill the world with music and friendship. See ya.